In today's video, I show you the Artillery Sidewinder X2. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of March of 2022, we have this printed and painted Aztec Viking Dice Tower set, as well as two additional late pledges for Mythic Roll, which includes 34 different models. Two all-in pledges for Flatline City Kickstarter. Two all-in pledges for League of Dungeoneers Kickstarter. This Yaro Studios Battle Map book. And finally, $100 to go towards the crowdfunder campaign, which the Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. If you want to find out more, you just use my link below to go to my Patreon page, and you can get in on that. So this Artillery Sidewinder was sent to me from Z-Banks in order for me to be able to produce a review. And if you haven't seen my video, they also sent me the longer LK5 Pro, and that is also a large format printer. And so for the most part, I'm going to be comparing those two in addition to my Prusa MK3S, even though those aren't large format printers. I think those are the printers that I have used, and so those might be some good benchmarks to see in terms of quality and value that you're going to get from this printer. I'm going to share with you just some of the similarities with the longer LK5 Pro, but the Artillery Sidewinder has the exact same build plate as a large format printer, which is the 300 by 300 by 400 height build plate. And in comparison, the Prusa is a 210 by 210 by 250. So you are getting a couple more inches on each dimension. And that actually does make a difference because I'm able to print off of this printer things that I need to slice or cut up in order to print off of my Prusas. So for example, if you look at this large piece here, I was able to print this off in one piece, whereas I would have to slice this up into different pieces in order to print it off of my Prusas. So the large format definitely does aid in making these larger prints. In addition, you are able to print out helmets, full-size helmets, all together as one piece on these large format printers, whereas I am not able to do that with the standard bed size from the Prusas. This bed here is a glass bed, but one of the things is it is permanently affixed to the machine so you aren't able to remove it. I'm not entirely sure why you would need to remove your glass bed, and in particular it keeps you from needing to put clips to hold down your glass bed to the um, heating bed. So I don't necessarily mind, but some people might mind if they need to switch out their bed or something like that. This came with Cura Slicer, which is fairly standard for most of the non-Prusa machines. And you can use other slicers if you want. I did go ahead and just use the Cura Slicer because I'm familiar with using that. And it comes with the profile to be able to use there as well. Similar to the longer LK5 Pro, this machine is super quiet. Even compared to my Prusas, this is a lot quieter. And I'm not sure if that's because those machines are over a year old and have been running constantly. They've gotten louder over time, whereas this is brand new. But I can barely hear this machine as it runs just a little bit. So this machine is actually very, very quiet and the fan actually turns off when it's not printing, which is a feature that my other printers don't have. So it just is a lot quieter than some of the other machines. Now I'm gonna get into some of the differences between the longer LK5 Pro and the Artillery Sidewinder X2 and that is um, the pricing. So this is gonna be about $100 more the longer LK5 Pro is going to be three to three fifty, whereas this machine is more like four to four fifty. And again, use the affiliate links that I have below if you want to purchase this. That gives me a little bit of a kickback. In addition, if there are any sales going on or discounts, that will also be in the descriptions below. Also, setup with this machine was super easy. It really was just attaching this frame to the base, and that was it. There was nothing else that I needed to do. You just need to be a little bit careful, making sure that. The uh, plug goes in here on the left-hand side of the machine, but I found that this machine was actually a little bit faster because I had it up and running within 30 minutes of unboxing, whereas the longer LK5 Pro took about 45 to an hour to actually get my first uh, print going. So this machine was actually a little bit easier. Just like the longer, it does have a micro SD card slot, so you can use that, but 
What I really like is it does have a USB port as well. So I've been using the USB stick that was included with this machine to transfer files to it and that's worked out great. Also, I know from the X2 that there are a number of improvements. The first one is that in the X1, the spool holder was off to the side, so it was taking up more table space. I'm glad that they moved it here up to the top, which I like. As well, the cabling uh, was bad with the previous one because it would oftentimes snap here on the Z-axis and they've strengthened up all of the cables. And I really like how on this machine, the cabling is super clean. There is nothing uh, in terms of cabling that's dragging or looks unsightly. So I feel like this machine looks really clean. The extruder is a Titan style direct drive extruder, which is an improvement over the longer. I like direct drive extruders a lot better. I think they just work a lot better and they're easier to work with as well. The motherboard is a 32-bit motherboard. Also, this machine does have power interrupts, so when there is a power outage or your power flickers, the machine is able to pick up where it starts off. But one of the things that you have to remember is because adhesion is based off of this heated build plate, if the power is out more than just 10 minutes or so, you're gonna lose the ability to reprint because pretty much the bed is gonna cool off too much that it won't hold on to the print. So just keep that in mind. But it is a nice feature because our electricity every once in a while will flicker on and off and sometimes uh, for a minute or two and having that feature to be able to restart uh, really is helpful. Now here are the two features which I think make it worth the additional $100 over the longer. And that is it has a filament runout sensor. And in fact, this runout sensor is really high up from the extruder, which one of the benefits is that once it passes this section, you still have quite a bit of filament that you can use to pull out. Now that's one of the features that I wish was actually on my Prusa because oftentimes the last little bit of filament because the sensor is right in the head, I oftentimes will, it will get jammed trying to come back out. So I'll have to go in there and pull it out with a pair of pliers. Not so with this artillery sidewinder because you just have so much lead, which I think is fantastic. And it makes it so that when you do run out of filament, the beeping that happens, you're able to pull it out and swap out your filament relatively easily, more easily than I can with my Prusas, as oftentimes they will get jammed. But even more important than that is the auto bed leveling feature. There is a generic BL Touch clone that is included on this machine. And that for me, folks, is worth the price of admission. Having auto bed leveling is, for me, uh, one of the features that I think is a must. You can definitely add that onto other machines as an upgrade, but I'm just glad that this machine actually comes with it. Now, there is a little bit of fiddliness when you're initially setting it up. They do have these knobs at the bottom where you do the initial setup, and then you're doing micro adjustments after you achieve that in order to get that first set and making sure that first layer is really good. So there is a little bit of fiddliness, but you gotta do that with even the Prusa auto bed leveling as well, where you're making micro adjustments so that you're getting the squashed first layer of filament that you want so that it adheres to the bed. But I've set that and been able to print with no problems. I did have a little bit of bed lifting, but I don't think that was due to the bed leveling. I just increased the temperature on my heat bed from 60 to 70 as the standard. And so far, I haven't had any lifting from the prints that I've had so far. And because it has auto bed leveling, I am actually keeping this machine. Now, the longer LK5 Pro actually was one of the GGGGs and I gave it to one of my Patreon supporters. But this machine, I am actually going to keep because of the auto bed leveling feature, as well as the sensor for the filament when it runs out. Those two features, and because right now I am making a lot of prints for cosplay props, for example, this really large piece for Jinx's chain gun, as well as helmets that I wanna do in the future, I'm actually going to keep this machine. Typically, I do give away machines and I'm so sold on the Prusa machine, but the Prusa Extra Large is two grand and I don't need all the features that the Prusa has and I don't wanna spend that much money. So this $450 machine is well worth it and I am able to get the larger size prints that I want and don't need to slice up as many pieces 
uh, as I've done in the past. Even some of my terrain, uh, more recently I did a video featuring the city of Furwood where I did need to print out the smaller pieces and glue them together because they didn't fit on my Prusa. Now with this machine, I'm able to print it all as one piece. And even here as an example, I'm printing out Vi's glove that I am printing out right now. And I'm able to print that out all as one piece as well, rather than having it split apart. So that is a huge benefit. And I really do feel like this has been plug and play. And uh, that has made it so that I am keeping this machine. Sorry to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys might be disappointed that this isn't one of the GGGGs for this month. But this machine, uh, I really like uh, and prefer it over the longer LK5 Pro. And therefore, I'm uh, keeping the machine. Now, of course, you might be asking, but what about the quality? And the quality is really good. So here is a comparison between what I printed this piece off of the Prusa MK3S compared to the lines, the print lines that you're seeing here off of the artillery. And you can see that this is relatively smooth. I'm not getting any banding and comparable to the prints off of the Prusa. Now, I haven't done a detailed analysis because these pieces are so large. Any imperfections, you're not going to really see. But uh, here is a really good video of someone else who did a review of the print quality and went into much greater detail. So check that out. And his conclusion is, is that the ar artillery is a little bit below the quality that he's getting from his Prusa machines, but still really, really good. So from my perspective, I don't see enough of a difference, especially in creating these larger props in print quality, as well as this terrain print that I made here. I can't tell a difference between what I made uh, off of this artillery machine and what I've done traditionally with my Prusas enough that I can say that I can see a qualitative difference. So in terms of print quality, which is the most important feature, to me they are equal or close enough to equal that I'm not uh, thinking that the quality is a step down. Now, do I have any critiques of this machine? And yes, I think the same critique that I have of the longer LK5 Pro, and that is it doesn't show the entire file name, especially if it's long, on the display as it does on my Prusa machines. And that's something that I really appreciate is uh, Prusa has this scrolling uh, bar of the entire file name, whereas here it's truncated and it doesn't tell me how much time is left for the print. I do have this bar that's telling me, you know, how far along, what percentage wise it is in the print, but it doesn't actually have a countdown timer. And that's an again, another thing that I like on my Prusa machines. The longer didn't have that feature either, but for the most part, it isn't a huge deal, but I do wish that it did have that integration. Also the menus on the touch screen isn't super intuitive, but for my purposes where I'm just hitting print, I don't really need a lot of features available while I'm printing. So that's not as big of a deal for me, but that might be an issue for you. So really that is the only criticism that I have is the display. But other than that, I've been really happy with all of these prints. It is a game changer to be able to print out some of these pieces as one large piece rather than cutting it all up and needing to glue together and sand down the seams. So definitely is a machine that I'm looking forward to using and being a part of my lineup of 3D printers. So the Artillery Sidewinder X2 does receive the Gaming Geek stamp of approval. Looking forward to being able to build larger builds with this machine. Again, use the links below if you're interested and go to my affiliate links in order to go and purchase this machine or to see if there are any discounts that are currently available. Also go check out my Patreon page in order to see what the GGGGs are for this month. Happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.